Hello, this is Evangelist Robert L. McKim, Sr. Well, I just wanted to update you on some uh, information that's been going on. Some of you may know and have seen my videos where I was mentioning that my vehicle was broke down. Well, they changed the plugs so it'll run, but it still has the oil leak that needs to be fixed so the plugs don't foul out again. The radiator needs either fixed or replaced. The fan, the whole uh, the plastic outfit that fans fit into needs to be just totally replaced instead of fixed with a. Uh, a uh, plastic uh, strap. I found out actually that after a while <clears throat> those get brittle and break. So my son's quick fix of the of that issue wasn't really a quick fix at all. It ended up causing me to have problems again later on down the road. Yeah, my, my son's a mechanic, and, and he, but he tries to get off as cheap as he can, you know, to fix something. And so don't I. I don't have $2,000 to have a, a garage work on my van. I can't get $2,000 anywhere. I don't even make $2,000 a month. The only thing it's going to take is a miracle. If, uh... A thousand people buy my book at uh, ten dollars a book, that's ten thousand dollars right there. I'll be out of debt on that van, and I'd have enough to get, you know, and I'd have the truth out there, but about what is going on, about my life growing up, about uh, my faith in Jesus Christ. about my near-death experience. I mean, how can anybody in their right mind, and if they truly have the Holy Spirit living inside them, how can they tr say that someone did not die in their sleep through aspiration, through bringing up food going into your lungs, How can somebody how can somebody not say that I had went someplace else and well I was in this place it was dark on each side of me and behind me but this bright light in front of me and I felt I was standing in line. I felt somebody was in front of me. I felt somebody was behind me. I could see like the uh, silhouette of somebody in front of me. My jaw felt like it was, you know, to the floor. You know, because I was looking around in all of where I was. And then this other presence, this presence of this man, he came... You know, around in front of the person that uh, uh, was standing in front of me. I, I could see he was wearing a robe. He had uh, shoulder length curly hair. He had a, a a beard, nice trimmed beard, mustache. And he wrapped his arm around me 
and in in the calmest, serenest voice that you want to hear, he said, "Go back. It's not your time. You are a chosen one." In an instant, I woke up, coughing and gagging. I had to set up because uh, I my lungs were burning from the food that went down into my lungs. People, I know that was real. And I know that I was sent back for a reason. The reason is, is to teach the truth. To preach the truth of Jesus Christ. Because there are so many out there that are believing in some false religion. Of just what is called the Pauline Doctrine. Let's just, you know, they just believe in Paul. Yeah, they, I mean, they, they believe in Jesus Christ. They believe in God. But as far as it goes. They have faith in Jesus Christ. But as far as it goes. They say they have Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit living in them. But as far as it goes. Everything else is all about Paul and Paul's teachings. Not Jesus Christ. In my last video, you probably heard where I was talking to Pastor Carrie on the phone. And he differs with me on the law. Nowhere, did Jesus, nowhere can I find that Jesus said that I came to abolish the law. He said I came to fulfill it. That doesn't mean I, uh, he came to abolish it. He came to fulfill the law. Fulfill the law where of a, the Savior coming to die for our sins and rise again on the third day so that we may have everlasting life. While he was on earth, he, he gave us new commandments. And he said, if you love me, obey my commandments. Do you love Jesus Christ or do you hate Jesus Christ? Because you must hate Jesus Christ if you're going around saying, well, we're no longer under uh, uh, any, any law. Not even the law of Jesus Christ. We're under grace. Really, do you really know what that word grace means? Grace is not like a, a free ticket to uh, do whatever you want to do, believe whatever you want to believe in, and everything is fine. Grace was in the beginning at the when God created the earth and the he the heavens and the stars and the animals and of course Adam and Eve. Grace was in the beginning with Adam and Eve. Grace was uh, with uh, Noah on the ark. Grace was uh, with uh, Joseph when he uh, was able to uh, give Pharaoh the answer to his dreams. Grace was with the Israelites, well, Abraham and and Isaac and the Israelites and Moses and on and on and on and on. Grace was always there. Grace is God's love for us. It is by the grace of God that He gave us His only begotten Son. Grace is not a law. And basically that's what a lot of, a lot of Christians even today in a lot of churches and pastors in a lot of churches want to be believe and teach is that grace is the new law. Grace has never been a law. That's what I'm trying to get across. Grace has never been a law. Grace is God's love for us. It's by the grace of God that you and I are here. Does that mean by the law of God that we are here? No, by the love of God that we are here. See, people out there trying to 
get grace to mean law when it's not law at all. That rhymes. Law at all. Long story short, someone had commented that uh, maybe I mentioned John 4, 16 by mistake, but in the Bible it is John 3, see chapter 3, chapter 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Now there's a thing there. Might be saved. Not will be saved, but might be saved. Not everyone's going to be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. So if you don't believe in Jesus Christ, you're already condemned. So, you know... Get right with Jesus before it's too late. Because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son. And this is the com nom excuse me. Condemnation. I had to clear my nose here. That light has come into the world. And men loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For every one that doeth evil hath the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. Um, in other words, say you can't have the good without the bad. You can't have the blessing without the cursing. In other words, if you believe in Jesus Christ, you're blessed. Or you, you are uh, basically in the light. But if you are not of Jesus Christ, you're in darkness. And there are many people in the church that are are in the darkness because they can't see the light. They have closed their ears and, and closed their eyes to the truth. They went to some Bible college somewhere and, and they were taught for many years that uh, it's this way and and then uh, when uh, someone like me, excuse me, comes along <laughs> preaching the truth then for me, it's the highway or, uh, you know, if I don't change. If I don't change to their way of thinking, then, then I'm the bad guy. I'm not changing. I, and, and I'm not apologizing for preaching Jesus Christ. I'm not apologizing for preaching the truth. I apologize for calling people morons, but I'm not apologizing for anything else because I never called anybody any other names, like I've been called. And uh, I want to update people on, oh, did I mention that already? I think I might have mentioned it in the beginning about my van being broke down. At the garage. And when I went to go to. Well I called yesterday morning. And I. Uh, said I was going to try to get away. Get up there and get my van. And he said. That he had some bad news to tell me. That someone had backed into my van. And smashed in my. Front driver's side fender. Which also broke. The inside of the headlight. That holds the headlight in. That's a new headlight. When the guy I bought the van off of replaced 
after he hit a deer. They're going to replace the fender free of charge and the headlight free of charge. I hope anyhow. I, you know, the way they talk, they're not going to, you know, they, they didn't say anything about charging me for that. But it's $275 for the diagnostic and replacing the plugs just to keep it running enough to get it home. After that, we're going to be stranded after I take this other vehicle back. I need to try to get down to Newcomer's Town today and get my son and see if he can help me some way, somehow. And maybe uh, take the radiator out and uh, take it down to this guy that works on radiators. See if he can fix it. And then somehow get back to me. And, uh, but this weather, man, don't really want to work on a vehicle outside. That's the problem. And Renee, she's going to go to her grandfather's funeral. She was going to go on the bus. But after getting it to the bus garage, uh, bus, you know, depot in Canton, Renee was getting sick and her knees were hurting. Her ankle was, and on her left foot was swelling up and, and turning in. And and her leg was swelling and hurting. And there was no way she was going to be able to get on the bus. Well, I asked the uh, lady if uh, they had any accommodations to help her on and off the bus because of her cerebral palsy and bad knees and they said that uh, well you have to do that in advance to get in the tickets and the only way of doing that is by calling I said well the church went online and uh, got the tickets she said that's a bad thing about getting tickets online shouldn't get tickets online should always call to get tickets but the thing is it costs more if you buy the tickets over the phone than online. And if someone else is buying the tickets for you, it costs a little bit more. If you're buying the tickets yourself online, it's less. If someone else is buying the tickets for you online, it's a little bit more. If you call in, it's, a little, it's more money. So, you know, it's like no matter what, you're going to be charged more money whether you like it or not, if someone else is paying your tickets for you. But with Renee's health and uh, her uh, stress that she's been under, she got sick and was hurting real bad and just didn't couldn't get on the bus last night. And, we we'll have to send the tickets back so that the uh, church will get a refund. But uh, I, w I didn't know how the refund worked until after I got home and called. Could I guess got a refund there, instant refund there. But see, it's not my credit card; it's their credit card. So I had to tell you know basically when I write in what the uh, send the tickets in that. Uh, she wasn't able to go because she got sick and she has, you know, the all the health problems and there was no uh, disability accommodations made in advance. And hopefully they will do uh, the uh, refund since the church was the ones that bought the tickets. Greyhound should be nice enough to give them back the money. So you hear that, Greyhound? Do you hear that, Greyhound? I hope, I hope and pray that, you know, instead of all this cursing that's been going on here lately in my life, that I get a big, big blessing. 
I've been praying and praying and praying for a miracle. Maybe, you know, this is a sign that a miracle is about ready to happen. Because, uh, you know, all, all this stuff that's being said about me constantly, that's not true. And, and this lady from uh, Thailand constantly chiming in and, and making fun of my videos just because I have a, a, a little lisp here because of my lip. She thinks I'm a, a psychotic. Let me tell you something. I earned a, a degree, an associate's degree in mental health technology from Belmont Technical College. Before that, I received a diploma in psychology and social work from Stratford Career Institute. Long before that, I received uh, a uh, diploma from uh, the former Mansfield Business College and uh, a certificate from the Ohio Peace Officers Training Council as a certified security officer. I'm certified by the state of Ohio as a security officer and in the training I took from the former Mansfield Business College it was private security and investigations. I'm going to find out who you are sooner or later and put a stop to you. To your to your rants on my YouTube. I'll find out who you are. I know right now legally I can't do anything about you, but maybe if I get a hold of the uh, authorities in Thailand, maybe they could do something. Maybe you're maybe you're a hacker pretending to be somebody else. I don't I know. I don't know. Anybody can be anybody on the internet. But I'm me. I am me. And I'm not going to change. And I'm not going to apologize for it. If you don't like it, I don't care. Grow up. Stop being, uh, babies in uh, some kind of occult that doesn't want to believe in the whole Bible, doesn't want to believe in the real history of things, and always want to, you know, force people to believe your ways. It's not going to work with me. Not when I know the truth. So I also have TMJ in my jaw. I have scoliosis in my upper back. My upper back is constantly under a lot of strain. And my lower back is always hurting because of the uh, two defects in the arthritis in my back. My legs is always hurting because the nerves going down from my lower back are, are inflamed. I have neuropathy in my legs and in my feet from my diabetes as well. I take a lot of pain medication and diabetic medication and neuropathy medication <coughs> and GERD and a few other odds and ends. That's all I take. I, I don't need no psychedelic uh, medications. I'm not depressed. I might have some anxiety, but I'm not going to take no medication for it because Jesus is my medication for my anxiety. And if you don't like it, I don't care. I'm not going to be drugged up. Drugged up to the point that I have no life like they're trying to do with Renee. She takes so much medication that she sleeps 
until 11, 11.30, 12 in the morning. And now if she took the medication the way they want her to take, she'd sleep 24 hours a day. Now what kind of life is that if you're just sleeping your life away? You might get up to eat a little bit, then you're right back to sleep again. What kind of life is that? What kind of life is it that uh, parents can't understand what their children are going through? Keep us in your prayers and your thoughts through this difficult time, through Renee's difficult time of not going to be able to see her grandfather laid to rest. Of course, they're talking about we might get anywhere from four to ten inches of snow around here and in that area of Indiana as well. So there's no really way of uh, <clears throat> going over there and coming back anyhow safely on a bus or in a vehicle. God bless you. Have a blessed day.